Hi guys. Well, you obviously know what's been going on. The situation is that my car is stuck in North Allen at the moment until I pay an outstanding garage bill. Now, plan of action is I'm going to go to North Allen today and pay the bill and get my car back because I'm not having it stuck there for a day longer. I'm not going to go into too much details of how I'm going to pay for it but I'm going to go and try and pay for it and get it. Now I'm walking down to the local Tesco to get the bus because let's face it, I don't fancy waiting at the bus stop outside the flat because uh, the buses for, for reasons have not been stopping there. And those reasons are that North Yorkshire Council decided to do some roadworks on a road at the other end of there, there um, uh, Plummer Road, without actually bothering to tell anyone, including the bus company. So it didn't appear on the bus company's website that that, that, that road was closed and the bus stops on, on the road outside the flat weren't going to get served by the buses. So to avoid that problem, because I have to be in Richmond to catch a connecting bus at 10 to 2, I'm going down to the Tesco. So, plan is, get the car back, and just not go to that garage again. Because, let's face it, I don't want to go to that garage again if, if they're going to do this to me. Um, now, they do have a little rating system, they sometimes send an, an email through about that, where you get, and they say, any, they say 9 or 10 is good, anything below that is bad. <laughs> So it'll probably be a bad because they should have been a little bit more sympathetic to my situation, but never went. <laughs> so, you know, they're just out to make money because uh, Stoneacre are greedy corporates. Simple as that. Yeah, it's, it's a nice day weather-wise. It's not blazing hot sun and it's not tipping it down with rain although we're supposed to be forecast thunderstorms apparently I can get across this road without getting squashed so I thought I'd have a film and chat to you guys my subscribers I've got a video coming out in the next uh, 24 four hours of time filming, maybe less than that now, where I program a repeater into the Motorola GP340EX. That repeater is the GB3GR repeater in Grantham, because my plan is to go to the National Ham Fest and see if I can access that repeater on one watt from the, from the Newark showground. As according to UK repeaters, it's a, about a 15 mile line of sight. I'm getting barked at by yappy dogs. <laughs> yeah, so I'm just following the usual path I'd follow when I'm doing the radio tests. A little bit of a struggle today. The bad luck comes in threes, I think, they say. And the reason why it's a little bit of a struggle is because of a few days ago, I, I had an accident of spilling boiling water on my foot and it, well, it actually just feels itchy. Like I want to scratch that, but if I scratch it, I'd make it worse. So <laughs> I've done well not to. So I'm just going to let it heal, which is the best thing you can do for a, for a burn. I have not been having a good time of it, but I've been keeping my chin up, keeping positive and just try and watch and stand in this broken glass that's down here. There's a lot of broken glass down here today. I just keep my chin up and just keep going. I can see Tesco already, it hasn't took me long to get down here and I don't need to worry about being in Richmond for, well, at least two hours, but rather than stare at the four walls in the house, I thought I'd come out. And do a bit of filming, just have a chat with general video nothing really radio related i don't have a radio with me today um 
well, there's radios in the car at the other end, waiting for me. So I've got to put the control panel for the FTM 400 back on the windscreen. Um, obviously got to turn on the Thunder Pole T3000. Uh, I've got to straighten out the CB antenna because that's crooked. None of this I can do until I get the car back. Now the car, when I left it, was okay. It was fine. With it being down there that long, I was obviously worried about whether it's still okay or not. Let's check the service road running into the back of the leisure centre. Oh. One of the drawbacks of filming is you've got to keep, keep an eye on your surroundings. So, one of my little plans coming up is I'm going to try and get a little used car, a little hatchback. Just an old one for maybe 600, 1,000 pounds maybe, when the time is right. So the, the Sandero doesn't get any more wear on it, because I've just spent an utter, for well, I'm about to spend an utter fortune getting it fixed. Well, it's been fixed, I've just got to pay for the, pay, pay for the work. And, Then I could, then I could just tool around. It's just, a, just an old, an old car. Don't have to. Just as long as it's got 12 month MOT on it, then that's absolutely fine. 12 month MOT and nothing wrong with it. Could probably get a car that's about 10 or maybe, maybe, maybe 15 years old that'll do the job. As long as it's uh, not too old, because. Uber's stipulation is that the vehicle has to be 1995 or newer and not been salvaged. So I've got to make sure it's not a salvage job and is um, newer than uh, 1995, uh, newer than NREG, <laughs> which isn't a problem. <laughs> so I don't think there's many NREG cars left. Think about it. <laughs> so I'll just get to the the crossing near Te Tesco. Oh, and it looks like one of my favourite Domino's drivers is working today. <laughs> he knows where the car is, I've already told him. <laughs> yeah, so I've just flown in my mouth around to spit it out. Ugh. Horrible. Well, at least I'll get some work done later. And We'll get there in the end. Oh, let's go down the steps towards Tesco now. See, it doesn't take me long to get down here. Ugh. Ooh. Let's keep my eyes open in this car park. There we go. Also gives me a good chance to check who's doing the Uber Eats deliveries this morning. Don't look as though there's anyone there that I could see that I recognise. It's usually a few of us regulars doing it. If I can't see anyone I recognise, I don't actually know who's doing it. Sure, the, sure I'll find out later when I get back with the car. Uh, don't want to get on a bus ever again. I hate them. They're loud, they rattle. And sometimes the ride is as uncomfortable as hell. Oops. Right. So I'm going to stop and have a look in Tesco and I'll join you again shortly. Okay, I've had me little look around Tesco. And I've just gone down to the bus stop at the end. And wait, waiting for the bus. And we'll just wait and uh, see if the bus turns up. There is a bus turning up, but it's not the bus I want. The bus I want is either X26 or X27. This is the 30, which uh, goes, um, I think it goes up to Hudswell, I think. I'm not 100% sure. So I don't know the timetable for the 30. But I know the um, uh, timetable for the X26 and the X27. Like I said, I don't need to be in Richmond for, well, at least another hour or so, but it's really nice to nice to have a little look in Richmond. I mean, I don't get down there very often anyway. 
so I don't need to worry too much about catching the bus yet. It from, but I'm going to go down to Richmond. Then I know I'm there, so if the bus is delayed anyway, I'm all good to go. As long as it doesn't rain, but I am under shelter of sorts. Uh, I will catch up with you shortly. Okay, so I've got off the bus in Richmond. So I've got about an hour or so to kill before the next bus I need arrives. That's okay. I don't get much chance to um, uh, look around Richmond, I shall say. But you can get an idea of what kind of place it is, if you've never been here before. Just to make sure there's nothing coming before I cross this road. So you've never been to uh, the original Richmond, because this is the original Richmond. Every other town in the world called Richmond was named after this very place. Fun fact. Um, Radio-wise, uh, Richmond is home to the GB3 IR repeater, which is on the top of the top of the hill, heading out of town. It, well, when I say out of town, it's on a, it's on an industrial estate. I know where it is, but I'm not going to give its location away. Next, we're. We're still on a hill here, but we're a bit lower down than where the repeater's located. And I do usually do monitor GB3IR when I'm driving about. So if you're passing through, you've got a two meter set in a car, put it on GB3IR, give me a call, and you never know, I might just be there and might just respond. So with this time to kill, I'm going to... Well, let's see, what could I do? Yes, it's 10 to 1 now. Actually, it's probably... Yes, yeah, you know, the clock says somewhere between 10 to 1 and 5 to 1. And that gives me an hour to kill for my next bus. There isn't a hell of a lot to do in Richmond. But... I can keep myself occupied. Oh, there's people in my way. Try that way. Yeah, quite popular with tourists at this time of year. Especially at this time of year. Hmm. Looks like I'm uh... Oh, I see. Now yeah, I might get a cup of, cup of coffee and something to eat in Greg, so I'll, might as well do that. I'll see how much uh, I've got. I think about a fiver, roughly. Don't want to spend more than a fiver. I'm not going to anyway. And uh, give me something to, to do whilst I'm waiting. So I'll catch you shortly. Okay, so I've just popped into Greg's. I've got myself a cup of coffee and a donut. Hmm. Other good places for coffee are available. Greg's do good coffee at a good price. There is a Costa just up the way as well, but you know, it's expensive, so. And for someone who's trying to save money, I think Greg's is a better option. Or McDonald's, but I'm in Richmond now, so <laughs> a bit late for that. So I'm just sat um, uh, in front of the church tower in Richmond and just about to have my cup of coffee and my donut. So I've got a little bit of time to wait. I've got about 50 minutes to wait before the bus arrives. If I get to the stop a little earlier, then I know I'm guaranteed to get to the stop early and if the bus is running late, then I don't have to worry. Yeah, so it's now just coming up to one o'clock. So 50 minutes and the bus will be here. And then hopefully I'll be coming back in the car. We'll find out when, when I get to the other end of that, but I'll catch up with you when I'm back over at that bus stop. Okay, so I'm sitting having my coffee. I've still got my coffee, by the way. I noticed the state of this. This is the road that goes through Richmond Marketplace. You can see that that bit all down there, smooth, not wrong with it. This bit here, completely knackered, completely failed. 
nothing left absolute nastiness and I think that if I've been coming through here in the direction of cars that come this way towards the street behind me I think this may be where the track rod end met its maker I don't know though this isn't acceptable to be honest because this is uh, used by buses all the time this is a tourist town and the road shouldn't be left to get into this absolute state I'll just let this car go and park up but as you can see there's really not a lot left of the road surface it's gone completely gone you start coming up here it's not as bad I was trying to get run over there's a pothole here quite a large one I'd call that a crater to be honest that could also have been where my um, uh, track rod end had gone if I've had to swing swing out towards this side a bit I mean, granted this whole marketplace is cobbled, which, to be honest, I've never had issues with track rod ends failing driving over cobbles, as you can see here. And I think the cobbles are quite lovely, although a little bit unpleasant. There's another pothole there, look. So I'm going to have to take extra care driving on this. But I still find that North Yorkshire Council are indeed culpable for damage to my car, because they should have fixed this and they haven't. So I've arrived at the bus stop after my little rant about the state of the road just uh, over there and still a bit early, still got about half an hour, you know, so I'm in the right place and I'm in the right place because the timetable's just behind me there. So I know where I'm going and obviously I know, and I know that hopefully when I get there I'll, I'll I'll go in there, pay for the car, and I will just get myself driven back up here to do some work. There's a bit of construction work going on behind me there, um, for the, the town hall by the looks of it. It's been going on a little while, but that's okay. Yeah, so I've just come down here a minute, because obviously I've still got a bit of time. So, I've got the town hall just behind me there. It's, I'll just put the camera up there so you can see it. That's slight off microphone, there we go. And that's what the construction work's all about. I don't know what they're doing, but it's obviously something that they need to do. So they've got scaffolding up and all sorts. And the park bench just in the construction zone, so you can't actually sit down unless you sit in a bus shelter, which is the most uncomfortable place to sit. Because all that bus shelter is, is seating wise, is just a couple of couple of like steel tubes. It's quite unpleasant. But you know, bus shelters have never had comfort in mind for passengers. That's all these people go past. Now let's go a little bit of a walk along a bit further. Show you what's down here in case you've never been to Richmond before. It's not just the town hall there, but we've got the, the town hall pub right next door to it. Not sure what it's like because I uh, haven't really been in there much. Just keeping an eye on my surroundings to make sure people don't walk into me because obviously <laughs> I've got to keep an eye on the camera, make sure I'm still in frame. So I've got a little bit of time. I didn't need to get to the bus stop that early. And got a Richmond Market Hall over here. Um, just try and see if you can see that. It might be difficult. Yeah, it's a little difficult. It's always it's always worth a look around in there if you want to have a look around. Basically, what's essentially a local market. And uh, tourist information, I believe, is in there as well. And then when you come out, you can go and have fish and chips, because there's a fish and chip shop right across the way. <laughs> or you could go in the pub, whichever you fancy. I'm not a big pub goer, so I would instead 
probably go in the fish and chip shop, but you know, I could still go to the pub. Yeah. I don't usually do little vlog type videos like this, but you know, I just wanted to highlight things on the journey to get my car back. I thought it doesn't rain because it's clouded over a bit now. Still too too hot to put a coat on. So if it starts raining I'm gonna have to get under the bus shelter. I'm gonna go back up to the top here just for the moment. And there's another pub there. And we'll just wait for the bus now. And I'll probably catch you not long before it gets here. Okay, so it's about 15 minutes before the bus makes an appearance. So I'm stood outside the bus stop waiting patiently for it. Um, now this bus stop's on a bit of a slope and someone's just come up here in the last uh, few minutes and uh, pretty much toasted their clutch. It absolutely stinks. So in that case, someone needs to learn how to do clutch control probably because <laughs> that smells horrible it's all right i won't have to smell it for too much longer so it'll either dissipate into the air or what it will do is it'll linger a bit longer but i'll be on a bus soon in about roughly about 10 minutes so what I'll do is, uh, this will be the last bit I film from Richmond and the next bit I will be in North Allerton on my way to the garage. Okay, so we've landed in North Allerton. Now I've just got to walk to the garage. There is a bus stop next to the garage but I don't think any buses serve it anymore so that's why I've come down to the town centre instead. But it's a nice walk anyway. So I can walk through this uh, lovely churchyard here something I used to do many, many years ago. When I did live in North Allerton at the beginning of the, the century, um, about 2000, 2003, I lived in North Allerton. And then I moved to Richmond and uh, the rest is history, <laughs> which will say. But I do like walking through the churchyard in North Allerton. It's always nice. I'm on the wrong side of the road for the garage, but that's okay. I have a ping on my phone. Not sure if you guys heard that, but I did because I've got headphones in. Oh. <laughs> it's... There we go. To reply to that, because that is the other half. <laughs> yeah, my, my other half wants me to send a package over, so, and which I was supposed to post weeks ago before this whole rubbish with my car happened. So let's put that back in my pocket. Didn't make the usual Skype noise though, which I find a bit odd. So, need to be on the other side of the road, but I'll wait till I'm further down to do that because I know there's a crossing further down I'll stay on this side I could have rented a car but <laughs> can't work in a rental can I <laughs> so I'm just going past Enterprise rent a car I used to rent cars a lot from them Ooh. Ding, ding. so I'm just going to go down now and get the car <laughs> loaded with payment methods and I just won't be taking it in that garage again I've learned my lesson I mean, if uh, my dearest actually messaged me when I was on the bus and I wasn't recording, that would be nice. Um, so check to make sure I'm not going to get run over. Oh, I've made it down to this, this end actually a bit quicker than I was expecting to. So it's half past two at time of recording, so I do have a clock in front of me, surprisingly enough. So I'm just down the far end of North Allerton, the Sainsbury's down here. There's a lovely little pub across the road from Sainsbury's called The Standard. Haven't been in there for years, but 
I do remember last time I went in, it was quite a nice little pub. Whew. I'm almost there. It's been one of them. But yeah, the bad luck's happened more or less in threes. Car's failed its MOT, then the car's cost too much to, to get up until now. And then I uh, scalded my foot, which is certainly very unpleasant. Let all these cars go before I I try and cross it. I know there's a car wanting in, so I'm gonna wait. There you go. The horror of crossing roads. Oh, that car just came out of bloody nowhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So as I was saying, the bad looks more or less come in threes. Car failed its MOT, then it, then it needed loads of repairs doing to get it through its MOT, then it cost an absolute arm and a leg to get it back. <laughs> not literally, but you get what I mean. And I'm not sure how much fuel's in it, so I may have to put fuel in it, which means going to a petrol station. And look, so happens there is an Asda petrol station literally within walking distance of the garage and that's my phone again that might be my dearest no it's an email but guess who it's from no thank you like I'm already in a bad mood with them I'm now going to get my car back and just go and just well, the only like I said, said on um, I think I said this on a on a post on X or I, I said it somewhere. The next time I'm down this end of North Allerton, let's get across the level crossing. Don't like looking, but that signal down there is green, so the train may come soon. I went across. That level crossing's a nightmare. When those barriers close. North Alton High Street backs up quite badly. <laughs> it's been like that for years. Oop. Obviously still on the wrong side of the road, but there's nowhere to cross till further down now. It's a nice walk. <sighs> That'll pop already, but... Yeah, there's a bit there for cyclists to cross, but it's not really for me to cross there, so... I can cross here though, and I'll cross at the traffic lights further down. Yeah. Well, I would if I didn't keep getting interrupted. You received... something. Apparently something's just come through on me PayPal. Uh, Yeah, all right, I'll get run over by that van. Uh, okay, I'm good. And keep going. All right. Not far to go now. And you'll find out <laughs> whether I'm going back home on the bus, which I hope I'm not, or I'm going back home in my car which I hope I am. So there's the filling station now. Filling station I've used for quite a number of years, but I've not been in there recently. Used to be Shell Garage once upon a time. Not sure who supplies them with the fuel right now. I'm just hoping they don't have their place monitored by forecourt eye. do not like it. Because if so, so I wouldn't really be too happy if that place was, because that's the name of the company that falsely accused me of theft of petrol from. Well, to be honest, it was the petrol station itself that told Fort Court I. And that petrol station is Harvest Energy on Victoria Road in Richmond. Uh, uh, it's a it's a Total Energy's uh, fuel station. 
with the little Morrisons next to Richmond Cricket Club. I ain't going in there again for fuel after the fact they falsely accused me of fuel theft. Which I'm sure I might have mentioned that on X as well. There. Right, so there's a traffic lights. Let's go behind this car. And cross at those traffic lights that I can see up ahead. Right, so I've got coming up to the traffic lights now. I can see the McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, I'm hungry, but I'm not that hungry. <sighs> not that there's much nutritional value in McDonald's food anyway. It's unhealthy. I, I've eaten too much of it recently, and I think it's time to cut back. I'll just cross the road here anyway. It looks like if I do not do that, I'm trespassing on BT's land. Uh, BT have a big uh, warehouse over here where they ship all your internet routers from. My my plus network came from from there actually. Surprisingly enough. And there we go. Okay. Right, so we're now on the correct side of the road. So we've got Mackies there, got all the waste land where they're going to build something else probably. And that'll be hopefully me getting a car back because I'm like literally within walking distance of the garage now. Any well, to be honest, I was anyway. I mean, I could have got off the bus further up the road past the garage there is a bus stop there but like I said before I don't know if anything stops there anymore All right. let's get myself and my car out of that garage and it's hopefully well I've got one more stop to make before I'm before I'm before I'm done in North Allerton if all goes the way I'm hoping it's going to go A friend of mine who lives over in Scarborough suggests I should get rid of the car, but I'm not getting rid of it. I'll get another car to do Uber with, but this, well, the Sandero I'm not getting rid of. And the reason why I'm not getting rid of it is because it's otherwise a good car. Track rod ends are normally knackered by the road anyway, or if you hit a curb pretty hard, which can happen. I wonder if they moved into the yard or whether it's still out front. Uh, it looks like they've moved it, which is good because I did say try and move it into the yard just to keep it safe. I'd rather it was safe if there's any space in there, which they've done because on a night I'd much rather it be locked up safe. And then I'll just have to either get them to bring it to me. Actually, I can see it. It's there. Looks behind the fence. I know where it is. Or. Oh, I'll go and get it myself once I've paid this bill. Right. Wish me luck. Right, guess a picture I'll give you a clue. I've got it back. And I need to put fuel in it. <laughs> in case the buzzer wasn't enough. And I better just knock that radio off, otherwise, um, you know. Copyright strikes and all. Right, so I'm gonna get myself off home. I've got one last, well, two last stops to do. Petrol and then I'm gonna, uh, surprise friend of mine. And then I'm gonna get going and get some work done. So I'll catch you in the next one.